Hey folks, welcome to our Main Street Bryson City Project House. This is a little side job that I'm taking care of. And I wanna show you some really cool differences between old framing, and when I say old, I mean 100 years ago, versus modern framing. So let's take a look. So, this really cool old house was built in 1902. During the deconstruction process, we found signatures of the original homeowners. We used the county records and photographs to identify the time period when it was built. We narrowed it down to 1902. Currently, it's 2020, so that makes the house... Well, it's really old. Look, who cares? Okay, listen, let's check out the techniques that they used back then and compare it to the techniques that we use now. So any modern structural engineer type person would walk in here and flip out because of all the things that are like missing structurally, right? But somehow this thing has stood the test of time, has been here more than 100 years, and we're just fixing it up so it'll last another 100, hopefully. First thing I want you to see is that this house is balloon framed. And what that means is that the studs go all the way from the first floor, all the way to the roof, even through the second floor. In modern construction, you build the wall system eight feet high or nine feet, you build a floor system on top, and then you build your upper walls, okay? They didn't do that back then. They just built it from bottom to top in one shot. Now, to support the floor system in the middle of the house, they installed this ledger. You can see that it is a one by four, and it's notched into the stud. This is a full two by four stud. I mean, two by four, that's it. It really measures that, it's big. Believe it or not, these two by six floor joists were bearing only on this one by four ledger, and it stood the test of time for 100 years. So this house was made up of lots of small rooms with low ceilings and no large spans over any of the openings, simply because it would have been more difficult to get lumber that would make those spans happen without sagging. In modern times, it's no problem to do a large span with one of these engineered LVL beams. You can see right here behind me that we have a large span supporting a ceiling and a roof load with no problem. I bet you the old carpenters were like, no way, we're not spanning more than four feet here. Next, let's talk about the rafters. Every rafter in this house was made of two by fours, and you could see that over time they had sagged almost an inch or two inches in the middle of each span. So we use these two by eights, yellow pine, to sister against each of the two by fours. That allows us to push up and take the sag out of the roof and get a depth of insulation for spray foam. Now it looks all pretty now that it's done with two by eight screwed to every piece of two by four in this roof. But actually it was a very difficult process taking many days for me up on a scaffold. We would take the rafter and screw it in at the bottom edge and then push up even as hard as I could push. You couldn't push the bow out of the roof. So we took a giant timber lock, a six inch screw. We drilled it through at a very shallow angle upward and then drive it in till your drill starts smoking and hoping that it pulls up enough and hits the top of the roof decking, making the roof flat. Next, let's look at the building envelope of this house. That's a big topic these days. Energy efficiency, vapor barriers, moisture barriers, insulation. Well, I can tell you, back in 1902, they put studs up and then they nailed this yellow pine siding right to the studs. No sheathing, no vapor barrier, no nothing. And insulation, you can forget about that. They were like, insulation what? They never heard of that, they didn't know what it was. Now, somehow this held up over time and is still here today, but I can assure you, it was probably cold in here in the winter time, judging by the two or three coal burning fireplaces that they had in this house. And believe me, everything in this house was covered with black coal dust, including me, every day that I work here. So to keep the house from racking, they installed these angle braces in every corner that would keep the house standing up vertical. As much as I hate to see the old siding go, we are gonna tear it all off and replace it with this. Half inch OSB, followed by builder's wrap, new windows, spray foam insulation, making it completely modernized with a new building envelope. Believe me folks, many people have said, just bulldoze that thing and get rid of it so you could build a new house here. Well, that would have been fun and all, but I don't wanna do that because there's something about the character of an old house that you just cannot replace. Man, it looks pretty awesome. Check out this old 2x4 compared to a new 2x4. Here's the difference. You can see that there might be 20 to 30 growth rings within this modern 2x4. And this old growth 2x4 has more than I can count. Look how close together they are. I guess that's the difference in timber harvested 100 years ago compared to now. Hey, thanks for watching today. 
Just to let you know, this project will probably take me over a year to complete because I'm doing it in my spare time, which I don't have any of that, but we'll keep you posted as soon as we see some more cool things to share with you. Mm -hmm.